This is an overview on how I created my best ever wheel in FreeCAD. I have a full length step by step video covering all detail in a separate video, so see the description. Now in FreeCAD, you have the part workbench, which is more original and works with all the other workbenches. And you have part design, which features a newer and more modern workflow. Part design is the recommended workbench to use. It works the same as all modern CAD systems, but if I need to use features or functions from other workbenches like curves or draft, they will be a separate body from what I'm making in part design. And trying to get those bodies back into your part design work is tricky. Here's my preferred way of dealing with that as we make an alloy wheel. Let's start by creating the hub. The top surface of the hub is a little tricky and would be very difficult to make in part design. So I would want to use the curves workbench to create a wireframe of it. I create the sketches and perform a sweep on two rails. And this is where the magic happens. I can create a shape binder. This is a function that allows for the geometry of my sweep to be put into part design and it will update if I change anything down the road but there are a number of tree items that will cause clutter when I try to update anything. So for that, I'll create a group in my tree and place all of my non-part design elements into that group. So I have a nice, neat repository of the things that generated my two rail sweep if I need to make changes in the future. I'll rename my shape binder to reference that group. Now, my tree is just the modern part design workflow and I have groups that I can reference for all the features that I use that are outside of part design in a nice organized fashion. Back in part design, I can extrude up to that shape binder and start my hub. I can mirror, fill it, add holes, and pattern the body of my hub. Wisdom tells us that we should save all our fillets until the end of our design, which has massive benefits. Now I'm using fillets here to be in body patterns relatively early on. That way I apply one single fillet instead of five of the same ones after I pattern the body. This approach has pros and cons and you get to decide what works best for your design. I add a pocket to the outside of my hub to give it some character and now I need to create a spoke. Again, the spoke creation is made easier with the curves workbench. Since this is outside of part design, I'll create my spoke and place those items in a separate group that I can later update if needed. I'll create the sketch for the base of my spoke and then create a 2D path on a plane. After that, I'll make a separate path on another 2D plane. With two paths, I can invoke the Mix Curves command on the Curves workbench and create a 3D path from the two paths for my spoke to follow. I'll create a sketch at the end of my path to mark what shape my spoke should be at the end of the path and now all we have to do is tell FreeCAD to blend the spoke from the start sketch to the end sketch over the 3D path we created. For that, we can go to curves and use the pipe shell command. With the spoke created, we can see it overlaps the lug holes significantly. We will make a revolve and subtract out that part of the interference. We will use the draft workbench and pattern the freshly cut spoke body. This is where we will, once again, use shape binder and boolean the spokes into the hub. I'll also be careful to add all the items I did outside of part design into my group so I can track the changes if I need to in the future easily. From here, I'll sketch out an outer rim revolve, something generic will do. We have the spokes coming through the rim here, so we'll do a second revolve to cut them out. We may be left with a graphical artifact but that's just graphics, the geometry is still exact. I'll make a cut through the spokes and add a chamfer on it to really enhance the look of the spoke. I would also like to have a project or wrap feature on the spoke. That's not something available in part design, so again, we'll use other workbenches to form such a feature, and once again, add it into our part design tree using a shape binder. I'll create a surface representing the spoke shape and intersect it with another surface. Using the slice apart feature from the part workbench, I can extract the exact shape I'd like to project. It looks like this shape doesn't want to be thickened, which would be our easiest route, so instead I'll duplicate the surface and transform the copy downward. I can use the surface workbench to fill the gap between the two surfaces and then back to the curves workbench to convert that into a solid. I'll pattern the solid and perform a boolean. 
Then I'll make sure to make a new group and move everything concerned with making that formation in the spoke that was outside of the part design workbench into that group. I'll do the exact same thing to remove material from the back of the spokes. Well, that's the overview on how I made my best ever alloy wheel in FreeCAD. I have a full length video in the description that shows every step of making this in real time. So be sure to check it out if you have any questions. From here, I now can go back and edit my tree with the confidence that I can find everything and no searching through complicated trees of booleans and other things like we might have with the part workbench. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.